Thanks for logging on to Christ Notes. We're going to keep our study going out of 1 Corinthians today. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Today we're going to talk about church. Um, so let's just dive right in. It says, For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh. You're under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there's envying and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh? behaving yourselves after the human standard and like mere unchanged men? First thing to remember here, you and I have been changed. We are new creatures in Christ. Old things have passed away for us. All things are new. We're now more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. We are now members of his body, flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. The Bible tells us that we have been raised up together with him and we've been made to sit together with him in heavenly places. The Bible also tells us that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. We're members of his body, flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. We've been crucified with Christ and nevertheless we live. Yet it's not us who lives, it's Christ in us that lives. So the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. So the truth is you and I are no longer mere humans. We are new creatures in Christ. So we should never act like ordinary men because we are no longer ordinary men. We are just like Jesus is even on this earth. That's the power of Jesus' sacrifice. That's how successful he was on the cross. So we go to verse 4. It says, When one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not proving yourselves ordinary and unchanged men? Now, we don't really go in and talk about people today. We don't say we belong to a person, but we do say we belong to a church. We'll go in here in verse 5. It says, What then is Apollos? What then is Paul? Ministering servants through whom you believed, even as the Lord appointed each his task. So today we don't talk about being part of a man so much, but we do talk about being part of a denomination. Think of the first question we normally ask each other when we find out someone else is saved. What church do you go to? Beware of that kind of thing. Beware of, of judging or, or thinking of people by what church they go to. you got to remember, our Father has us, his children, his body, in every church. We are in every nation, every tongue, and every tribe. Jesus is that successful. The body is bigger than what most people believe that it is. So just because our Father has somebody in a church, don't judge them if you think that church may be wrong. Because our Father, once again, loves everybody. So he will send us to the world. Remember what Jesus said? He said, did I come for there's a physician for the well or for the sick? So our Father will take us to where the need is. And that's everywhere. But the warning is, don't get caught up in denominations. Buildings and names of buildings tend to separate us. True church is when two or more of us are gathered together in his name. And that can happen anywhere. That can happen in a marketplace. It can happen in a kitchen. It can happen while you're in a car driving. It can happen on a bus. It can happen anywhere. Wherever two or more of us are gathered together, that's church. And that's the power of church. It doesn't have to have a name. It doesn't have to have a building. It doesn't have to have a set time. And true church doesn't care the way you dress when you come to church. It doesn't care the words that uh, you may or may not speak when you're baptizing somebody. True church is fellowship, it's communion, it's getting together, and that's what our Father will cause us to do. So these guys in Corinthians, they were all getting caught up in who they belonged to, and that was dividing them. And the same thing happens so much today, and we need to make sure that it doesn't happen. And I guess our piece is this. Our piece is our Father will absolutely keep it from happening, because in John 15, Jesus said, Whatever hinders our production of fruit, our Father will prune it out of us so that we can be used more and more to produce more and more abundant fruit. So our peace really is this. God will make sure that it doesn't happen in our, our lives. And that's, that's what the world doesn't understand, is that our Father takes care of us in spite of ourselves. Our Father isn't reactive to us. We are reactive to Him. So, I hope that helped you. Oh, and like always, you can't help but be blessed this day because our Father is greater in us than anything that's in this world. 
and he will make us a, more than conquerors 100% of the time.